it seems like that there is no urgency. I have called, um, have given, given them things, and it's almost like it's a nonchalant thing. And also, um, I just don't understand why no one has even tried to have a search party to go out and check the area where, quote, our son was last seen. Then Tamika, you know, said that Corey told her that he was on his way to Los Angeles. She told him to be safe. Have this music video done as soon as possible. So then y'all stay prayed up and healthy, man. Y'all bless. But stay woke. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new here, welcome. We've reached another year, which is a significant blessing that shouldn't be overlooked. And we all know entering the new year, there's a lot of cases that are overlooked. And right now we have one today. I want to discuss the mysterious disappearance of a man named Corey Danley in Kerman, California. He vanished while he was out with a friend on his birthday. Despite the available evidence, this case has not received much attention or pressure to uncover the truth. Corey Danley was a 33-year-old from San Diego, California. He was one of five siblings and was raised by both of his parents. Tamika described Corey as a bright light during his childhood, showing a fascination with music from a very young age. He started playing the drums at just six years old and later taught himself how to play the piano and guitar. Corey's talent was undeniable and he began taking music seriously under the artist name Crum Dread. He focused on creating a hip hop, soul, and R&B sound forming his own band and performing his own shows. With multiple EPs and singles, Corey built a dedicated fan base. How old were you? How old was I? That's a good question. Like 22, maybe 23. And so you've been playing for six months? Uh, no, probably about like six years, seven really? years now okay. almost. Yeah. Wow. So this is a divinely inspired gift yeah so you were not a kid going i want to do this and nah i was like a church kid like my parents like were super into church and so that's really where i learned music but like when i started smoking weed was when i started to kind of look into other avenues of life and found rastafari found me and and then I chose the path that all, it all chose me. As his music career gained momentum, he made the decision to move to San Francisco. While he loved music and it was his passion, he also cherished being a father to a beautiful son. Being a dad was something he didn't take for granted and he wanted to provide his son with everything he could have. Unfortunately, Corey's sudden disappearance left his family confused because he would never leave his son, his family, or his music behind. In August 2023, Corey had a tour scheduled in California to perform three shows. However, while he was on tour, Corey mysteriously disappeared. On August 4th, 2023, Corey and his friend went to a house in Kerman, California. Corey didn't know anyone there, but his friend did. Fast forward to August 8th, four days later, and there's still no sign of Corey. Tamika later received information from a Facebook post about Corey's disappearance. A friend of Corey's, Zach Styles, made a Facebook post stating, this is Zach Styles." and I'm reaching out to see if anyone has heard from Corey yesterday or today. I have his phone and belongings, so please let me know. When this post was shared on Facebook, people were confused and started bombarding the comment sections, expressing concern and asking for Corey to be brought back home. It definitely left many people feeling unsettled. Once the comments started pouring in, Zach seemed to disappear. 
Now, Zach is in contact with Tamika and he's expressing to her that Corey is missing. He tells Tamika apparently Corey had stormed out of his house in Kerman, California at 4 a.m. in the morning after an intense argument with a friend. He left without a shirt and left behind his phone and belongings. Zach shared that he believes Corey decided to hitchhike back to San Francisco and that his life may be in danger. Upon receiving this news, Tamika becomes distraught and immediately reports her son missing as she should. She called and texted Corey multiple times and you know, she was unable to reach him. Tamika filed a missing persons report prompting the Kerman County Police to take action. Investigators sent out a search team to find Corey. During their investigation, the police became aware that Corey had left the house on foot. They also learned that Corey and one of his friends had been dropped off at the same house. While Corey didn't know anyone there, his friend was actually acquainted with everyone present. So you can just imagine that, you know, Corey is in an environment that he doesn't really know. This is new for him. The investigators conducted an intense search for Corey using cadaver dogs, but they found no sign of him. As a result, the police finally obtained a search warrant to search the house where Corey was last seen. So now it's September 6, 2023, and finally a search was conducted and investigators were able to look through the home and retrieve Corey's phone. However, they couldn't find any evidence linking to Corey's whereabouts. But another thing that was extremely important was that investigators received interesting news from Corey's mother. Tamika shared that Zach decided to keep Corey's phone for two whole weeks while he was missing. He called Tamika repeatedly from Corey's phone, went through Corey's social media accounts and text messages. He also weirdly asked his mother to wash Corey's clothes that he had left at his house. Remember when I told you that Corey left that house at 4 a.m. shirtless? So Zach asked his mom to wash the clothes. He didn't attempt to give anything to police and he refused to give back the phone to Tamika. Investigators did find it strange Zach's actions and felt like if someone is holding on to valuable evidence and maybe tampering with it, then they're probably a suspect. Authorities were looking into three suspects, Zach Stiles, Jason Wisdom, and Dylan Thompson. The Fresno County Police Department do believe that foul play is suspected. Corey's mother expressed that right now, she's feeling two emotions, hurt and anger. Quote, she endured the holidays without her baby boy for the first time. I wasn't able to hear his voice for Christmas. I wasn't able to hear his voice for Thanksgiving, she said. Great morning, everyone. I am the mother of Corey Danley, AKA Crundred, Corey Holston. This is my son, this is my eldest son. And I want to get on here today and thank everyone for pouring out everything that everyone has tried to come and come together and do to find my son. I want to say thank you. Uh, what I'm feeling right now, I cannot describe in words. It's a parent's worst nightmare to know that your child is out there and you don't know if he's dead and you don't know if he's alive and you can't get to him. So that is what I'm feeling right now. And the fact is, the longer time goes on that I don't hear anything from him or about him, the worser I feel as a mom. I'm not giving up hope. I have a mother's heart, so my heart is praying that he's okay, but my mind is telling me to prepare. So I wanna say thank you to everyone for reaching out 
And I want to ask everyone, if you can, don't give up looking for him. Keep looking for him. At first I said, well, maybe he just fell off the grid. He's just hanging out somewhere, which he, he's done. But in my heart of hearts, I know that this is not the case right now. Is something has happened to my boy. And I believe that Zach Styles and Dylan Thomas and a couple of other fellas know more than what they're saying. I think they've done something to them. I think they've done something to, to him. And they're hiding their hands and they're hiding. I ask you guys, if you can, those that are out in California on my behalf, put the squeeze on them and the pressure on them. I'm doing everything I can to get out there as soon as possible. Um, Between Kerman, California, up to the Bay Area, if if you have any connects, if you know anybody, if you could roll out to the almond fields, the orchards out in Kerman, because... I know that those areas, that area in particular, is in the middle of nowhere. And there's nothing out there. They could have did anything to them by way of that way on up to the mountains, heading back up uh, into Sonoma County. Um, If anybody sees or hears anything, please let me know. Corey was last seen wearing red sweatpants, which is pictured in one of his pictures, um, and some sneakers and no shirt, walking around at 3 o'clock a.m. on the outskirts of Fresno County, the Kerman area, Bishop Bishop Road. uh, This Zach Styles dude is just giving us stuff bits and pieces of stuff and I think it's all crap honestly he even had his mother wash Corey's clothes if you get any messages from Corey's phone it is from Zach Styles Zach has Corey's phone he may have had had it I don't know if it's still in possession but Anytime anyone has logged on to any of Corey's social media this week, it has been Zach. So please, any, you know, Corey is my eldest son. He has always been the one. I I love all my children, but I had to worry least about him because Corey knew how to survive. He was a survivor. He, Corey always knew how to land on his feet. But this type of situation, we are pouring out looking for him and he has not reached back. And that is not a good thing because normally he will reach back. Normally he will call me and say, yo mom, I'm okay. Even if it was a two minute call. I just spoke with Corey a few days before his birthday and I sent him some money for his birthday and told him I love him. And every time I talk to Corey on the phone, he always, 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 always told me in the phone calls, mom, I'm going to make you proud. I'm going to make you proud of me, mom. Mom, I'm going to be famous and I'm going to take care of you. But I love you so much, Mom. And I always would tell Corey, Corey, you don't have to make me proud of you. You don't have to become famous for me to be proud of you. I'm I'm already proud of you. And I love you no matter what. I love you. It's always my words to my son. He always calls me a mother's day and my birthday and different days. And my kids, they always know that I am big on their birthdays and 
I go out of my way to celebrate them. They're all grown now. My son's birthday was August 7th. And he was last seen at 3 a.m. on his birthday, August 7th. Nobody went to look for him. Zach Styles made some sorry ass excuses for why. When Dylan Thomas started that altercation with my son, because from what I've heard, Dylan started the whole thing. First, Zach said they threw blows. And then he said they didn't. Then he said, I asked him why Corey didn't have on a shirt. He said because he didn't know. Maybe they took it off of him or maybe Corey took it off. You know, he didn't. He can't give me straight answers. And then come to find out they tore Corey short off of him trying to pull him away from the altercation that's when Corey walked away in the middle of the night in Kerman, California almond fields and no one has seen him since my question was why didn't y'all go after him why did y'all let him walk away no one can give me answers Oh, we were just sitting on the porch because we got locked out of the house. Uh, this is what Zach says, him and Dylan. So they can go in the house and get their things, get him and Corey's things. But you didn't think to go back to see Corey, see after Corey, because he's walking in the middle of nowhere, which is not good for a black man in that area. I will just keep it real. I called hospitals. Friends have called hospitals. There's no sign of him. He had a performance in Ukiah, California. For Saturday night and Friday night, he didn't show. His bandmates are concerned. They're looking for him. So if anyone knows anything, please contact Fresno. Police, con sheriffs, contact. I don't care where you are. Contact the authorities. Contact me so we can find my baby. Please, please, please. And again, thank you for everybody that has helped. I'm not giving up. And I ask that you don't either. And I ask you to spread this video. Thank you. God bless you. And... Prayers up for Crumb Dread. Good morning, everyone. This is Corey, um, Father. And I just want to thank everyone that has been reaching out, doing what they can to help find my son. And I really want to say I really appreciate everything. All his friends, uh, his bandmates that are out there searching, trying to find answers. And I also want to say a huge thank you to my church family that is praying. Um, our intercessor team, they're praying uh, for our son's safe return. And I just want to thank each and every last person that is involved helping trying to find my son, our son. Um, I am a little disappointed in the Fresno County, County Police Department. It seems like that there is no urgency. I have called, um, have given, given them things, and it's almost like it's a nonchalant thing. And also, um, I just don't understand why no one has even tried to have a search party to go out and check the area where, quote, our son was last seen. So um, I'm a little skeptical about this uh, and very disappointed in the police department but i'm going to let them do their thing um, they did tell me monday they was going to begin um some things so i am waiting you know time is of the essence also this guy named zach i have communicated with him and though he still has my son's phone 
which I think is very, very odd. I think it's very odd that the police department has not or even tried to attempt to contact Zach um, because he has my our son's phone. But he does because yeah. he's he's called us from our son's phone. He called us yesterday from our son's phone. And he's crying all these crocodile tears, saying he's my brother. Oh, I love him. Oh, I can't believe this. But every time we ask him something, it's either no answer, half answer, or the answers change. Yes. And when I asked him about this guy named Dylan, and I said, well, what's his last name? Uh... I, I really, uh, I, I think his last name, Thomas. You know, I'm not going to hang out with nobody. I don't know his last name, which I think is fishy as well. Um, and so, and this Zach says he goes back with Corey about 10 years. And that, that's just his brother. And he loves him so much. But I will say this. Uh, my son's, my, my, my grandson's mother says that she thinks Zach is a pretty weird guy and everybody has gotten these same vibes that I've talked to that Zach is bad news and he's a weird guy. Zach Styles, Zach ZJ Styles, S T Y H L S or something to that extent. Um, through all of this yesterday, he lets us know he's back in Sonoma County living his best life. And he also contacted one of my son's bandmates asking him, can he return Corey's belongings to him as well as stay at his house? And he doesn't even know my son's bandmate like that. And so my Son's bandmate was really weirded out at the entire thing. And they found Zach's mother, Teresa Crothers. Remember the name. C-A-U-R-T-H-R-S or something to that extent. She sent a message to one of my son's producers or friends or something that she wanted to talk to me um and I slid her a nice text telling her that nothing or anyone that they are involved with are gonna have a any type of peace until we get to the bottom of this situation period now Zach would not respond to me when I asked him hey listen my son-in-law lives in the area. Can you give Corey's phone and his things to my son-in-law? Or even to one of my son's friends that wanted to get his stuff. I said, or when I make my way out to California, which is going to be very, very soon, you can give it to me or the sheriffs. He did not respond. Zach did not respond to me. Until I sent a direct text to him and I said, I believe you did something to my son and I'm giving all my information to the authorities, including your name. Then and only then did he respond and he was shaking and kind of stuttering, but still a lot of stuff he says didn't add up. He wouldn't get back in contact with us until yesterday. And then again, too, when he contacted my son's bandmate, he had a completely different phone number. So this is what I'm saying. Everyone, please continue to put the pressure out, the pressure on. Continue to search. If you find out anything, contact us. Let us know. Contact the authorities there in Fresno. Um, come Monday, we're going to uh, turn the furnace up a little bit. If we have to get the FBI involved, then that's what we're going to do. Because right now, um, the Fresno County Department is just twirling their thumbs. 
I don't like to play the race card because that's not the type of person that I am. But something is not right. When we have constantly told you that this guy has our son phone and you're not making any attempts to call or anything, then our antennas is up. They're just stonewalling us and making excuses and telling us why they can't do this, why they can't do that. As much stuff as we've given to them. Uh, so I ask especially everybody in California, but especially because my son normally lives in Santa Rosa, the Sonoma County area. Everybody that's near around the Bay, Oakland, Santa Rosa, Sonoma County, um, San Francisco, Ukiah, all of those areas. If you could even call the authorities, uh, make a report on your end, it would be appreciated. Again, all the people that we know down in Fresno County, on down towards Bakersfield, uh, Kings County. Hanford, Lamore, Kerman, um, all of those areas. Mama's here. Rocky, this is the last area that Mr. Zach claimed that Corey was at. I call bullshit. They did something to my baby. Did something to him. They took his life. Did something to my baby. Making sure that ain't his hair. Corey, Corey, Corey. Here, baby. Show me where you are. Bring you home. I do feel that he was in this area, but they did something to him. Baby boy. Mama's here. Psychic lady said I would find you. I feel like you are here. Corey. Corey. Me and Corey against the world. Mama's here. Mama's here, baby. Mama here. You know how much I love you? But you are right now. You are all right now. I know they did something to you, old dumb bastards. But they're gonna get what's coming to them. 
Corey's family has been very vocal about his disappearance and his case is still currently unsolved. And the sad thing about this, Corey disappeared on his birthday. He was turning 33 years old. So I know for his parents and family, his disappearance is disheartening. He also leaves behind a son. I'm underworld. Had my tattoos in Shibuya. Police think I'm of the underworld. Why treat a nigga like he 12? How you looking up to me and talking down? Yeah. Can't you see I am the big man? God level, I am the I am. I film it with the drone cam and the pick the killer cam. Zoom on a stick noise. I'm so close, I'm on a kill. Controller on your lower back. Yeah, it's the good. They can roll the eyes back in. Let's go. Roll in. Ride. Roll it when you ride. 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 I do want to share one of my favorites who was on TikTok, Prophet Ruben. He also covers true crime and missing content and brings awareness for black victims as well. So please go ahead and support his platform for updates regarding Corey's case. I do want to share a couple videos from his platform. Um, I do believe he is also good friends with the family and he breaks down the very small details that led up to Corey's disappearance and the suspects. I want to bring another partial update. I want to give a shout out to Dateline NBC because they have literally picked up this story uh, they're getting Tamika's voice out there about her son, Corey Danielly. And this is what it's all about. This is why I stay on top of these cases, you know, and I push and push and push because the stories that are not getting national attention, we push them out there. So that's why I stay diligent on these right here. Now, as we dig deeper into all of this, people are talking. A lot of things are being uncovered. This is Will Dolan. Will Dolan was arrested for having a loaded firearm in public not too long after Corey went missing. Why is Will so important in this right here? Because Will and this girl right here, Nancy Marie Rodriguez, was the ride for Corey, themselves, Zach, and Dylan, all them to go to a um, canoodle concert, canoodle uh, gathering. Yes. They were the transportation from L.A. to the Tweaker House in Kerman. And what I find strange about Nancy Rodriguez is she hit up Corey's mom. And she sort of had something that is kind of confusing. She found something in her back seat. Right? And let me show you what she found in her back seat. She had Zach's mother's driver's license in her back seat. Why is it in your back seat? And now that you think about it, see, Zach said that Will went with him to a tweaker party of Dylan Thompson, Brittany Thompson, and Jason Wisdom on South Bishop, this house right here. And when the argument was supposed to happen, this is the road right here out of that long driveway right there. They said that Corey came down this long driveway and turned right going down this way. So it's all making sense. You know, th this right here was when the uh, police searched Zach's house, right? They did a, they had a search warrant on all this stuff right here. If you remember that, you don't remember that, you can go back into the Corey Danieli, uh file folder right there. You can see it right below me and you can see the whole series of this. But a lot of it's making sense. Now from there, they all went to Dos Palos. That's, j uh, that's a house up in um, Dos Palos where Jason Wisdom's best friend lives, right? And at the same time, Zach was posting on Corey's Facebook page, acting like Corey. By the way, that's Jason Wisdom right there. Now, all of them went to the Canoodle camp out together. And at that time, Corey, he wrote to his mom that he was headed to LA on July the 25th, which was right around, you know, after the Canoodle, right? So, Tamika, uh, she said that she spoke to her son on July the 26th. She told him that she was at work and she said that she got a random text. He said, hey, mom, can you cash out me $10? Then Tamika, you know, said that Corey told her that he was on his way to Los Angeles. She told him to be safe. And that was her last contact with Corey. Now, this right here is during the canoodle camp out. Now, you see that tie dye shirt right there? That's Will Dolan. And he's holding Nancy Rodriguez. And this is the house that's on Bishop, South Bishop. See the big swimming pool? 
Yeah, that's the house right there. That's the Black Labrador. The one when the cadaver dogs were coming out, when the police were coming out and everything, that dog right there would just bark, 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 you know, to distract those dogs. And that was on purpose due to wisdom. Now, since Teresa's license was allegedly found in the back of Nancy Rodriguez's car, then most likely, more likely than not, everybody was in her vehicle. And I want to ask, you know, are the authorities going to search her vehicle? Since that was the vehicle used to go to that party, that, that had to be the vehicle used leaving the party. Maybe, just maybe, Corey was in that vehicle, right? We need to get that searched. See, the thing is, they could ping her cell phone to find out the route that they took and where they stopped along the way and back through the mountains. Like Zach said, this has to be the vehicle that Zach was traveling back in. And they were all together. Zach, Will, Nancy, Jason Wisdom. And from what I've learned, Jason is a hothead. Very, very hot-headed. They said that he's so hot-headed he has the heart of evil. But that's what was said, allegedly. But people are talking. People are sending me things. People are talking to me. And they're revealing a lot of things. So I'm trying to figure out why the police are not questioning these people on a much deeper level. Because they can lie. He's known for it. Along with his family, if you look up his family and stuff, ex-police officers who were fired and arrested, embezzling money and all this stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that's out there and I think it's being skipped over. Don't let this right here, people that look like me, dismiss the fact that something has happened. We should care about everybody. From Will needs to be questioned, Nancy Rodriguez and her car and her cell phone needs to be looked at everybody in this photo needs to be talked to i'm pretty sure y'all haven't talked to everybody and like i said don't you find it strange that she would find this license in the back of her vehicle and they all were together so why hasn't her vehicle been searched why hasn't forensics gone through it we need justice for corey Danielly, and we're not going to let up until we do get it until we get the answers till we find Corey Danieli. You know, as this case progresses forward, it's been going on for a while. We're still in search for Corey Danieli. But in the meantime, a lot of puzzle pieces are still coming together. People are actually starting to come forward and talk. Uh, one, because of conviction. Two, because of the heart uh, felt hurt that is going on with uh, Corey Danieli's family. We're getting messages. We're getting people that are talking, um, actually talk to these people. Um, you know, and they're willing to talk to the police, but they're not going to come public until everything is uh, resolved. But we have people that are coming forward and they're really spilling the beans. And we have another name that just popped up named Wisdom. This is a person that uh, was with Dylan Thompson, Zach Styles, And we have this guy right here. So when they started talking his name, we started looking. They even had pictures of this guy. And I started noticing in um, some of the contacts of Zach and Dylan Thompson and different photos and stuff, this guy's in the same picture. And I always say, even when people say they don't have a social media presence, your pictures are out there somewhere with somebody who's taking a picture of you and them. So when they sent me this right here, I had to go looking because I want to find out what is this 46, 47 year old man? What's he doing hanging out with these younger boys? But then you got to realize uh, most of these older guys that are hanging out with these younger guys, they have this influence over them, you know, that, that they can lead them, you know, to to do crazy things and cover up things, too. So what are we covering up, Mr. Wisdom? Because we found out that you got into it with Corey Danieli, um, at uh, along with Dylan Thompson and 
over at uh, Zach Styles' house. So, you know, you guys know what happened to Corey. And the reason when the police officer did a search warrant on the vehicle for Zach, they didn't find anything, is because we found out. We found out that you guys had a rental car, a black SUV, and you also were driving a goldish Chevy Malibu. Hmm. Starting to make sense there, Mr. Jason William Wisdom. We also know about the older lady who mysteriously uh, was found deceased and allegedly left you her house. Hmm. We found out a lot of stuff. It's all coming out. I got a whole lot more than this right here. Yes, we turned it over to the police. And from what we're hearing from multiple people, when I say multiple, that means many, right? From multiple people that you did have something to do with this older lady right here because it's still a pending case. So, Mr. Zach Styles, you and Jason Wisdom and Dylan Thompson, y'all need to start talking now because a lot of stuff is coming out and it's not looking good. Because not only are you guys tied to Corey Danieli, you're tied to um, other cases. You're, you're tied to a lot, other, a lot more other cases. Uh, the older lady who Jason Wisdom was dealing with. Um, man, you got, you got some explaining to do. They even drew out a little map of, of the events that happened that night and where everybody went, including Corey Danieli. So where is he at? What happened? Time to start talking. As we keep searching, a lot more answers keep coming forward. People just keep calling out different names and their involvement in a lot of things. A whole lot of stuff. Family members, friends, especially this one right here. See them two driveways right there? Yeah. And if you remember those uh, letters right there, those, those uh, text messages, that's the long driveway right there. Yeah. To where everybody's name's coming up. Where is Corey? What happened? Zach, Jason, and Dylan? There's a lot more that we're going to bring forward, okay? Because it's time for everybody that's associated with everybody that's in that whole circle. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of crazy, but yeah. People I want you to remember this, Jason Wisdom. Um, guilt is just like pain. It forces you to feel it. And pain is just like guilt. It's going to keep you up every single night. Every night. Because the chickens have come home to roost. We're going to get justice for Michael Bryson and Corey Danieli. We're going to get justice. And it's coming. And it's going to be swift. So guys, honestly, this case is a lot and I feel like it's clear as day what happened. I feel like he was around the wrong people. I definitely feel like, you know, something sinister happened behind the scenes. And I just pray that this family is able to receive closure. His mother, Tamika, she's very active on TikTok and she's definitely trying to bring this case out there. Um, so guys, please keep her in your prayers. His father, um, Corey's father, um, all of his siblings, his family and his friends, because this is just a prime example, y'all. Please be careful who you keep in your inner circle. This man leaves behind not only his family, but his son. You know what I mean? So please, guys, just be cautious of who you're allowing in your inner space and where you're traveling to as well. There are some theories that um, the town that Corey was in was possibly a son downtown um and something happened to him there so there's a lot of theories regarding that and i also want to pray for the family before we close out this case because i feel like it's very important to send these families some love some support some hope because right now tamika and her husband they're grieving 
right now because there's this open hole that they don't know what happened. They don't know. They don't know if he's alive. They don't know if he's gone. And the suspects, the people that was with him, they're all off on vacation. I believe Zach is like in Hawaii. Like everybody is living their life while she's still here trying to figure it out. So let's go ahead and pray for her. Father God, we all come together and we pray for Corey's family right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father Lord God, to just pour over them your peace, your joy, and your hope, Lord God. I pray that whatever is in the dark always comes to light, Father Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you just put this case in the right um, hands when it comes to detectives and investigators, Father Lord God. I ask you, Lord God, that you continue to convict those convict their hearts to just speak truth and no lies i ask you father lord god to just bring peace to Corey's baby boy even though he doesn't know what's going on i pray father lord god that you're always with him as he grows older when he has questions when he just doesn't know the details regarding his father father lord god i ask you lord god to bring closure for this family bring peace whether Corey is with us or not, Father God, bring closure, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you also keep my subscribers safe. I pray, Father God, that you also just give us discernment with who we have in our inner circle. Give us discernment with the people that's not supposed to be in our lives, Father Lord God. Protect us when we have when we have this gut feeling to not go places or to not be somewhere, Father Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you you let it be a known feeling that we can't even ignore, Father God. I pray that you protect us while we're going to work, school, the grocery store, while we're driving, while we're traveling, Father Lord God, as we just now enter the new year, Father God. Keep us under you and protect us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And definitely share this case. And keep Tamika in your prayers. And I'll see you guys in the next video. But stay woke.